You're listening to Bay of Islands Radio Original Podcast. Incoming transmission. Beam aboard for another episode of Sunday Night Geek, live from the Bay of Islands Radio Studio in Waterbrook, Newfoundland. Find us online at boir.ca and by subspace transmission 100.1 FM or on Rogers Channel 9. Join our hosts, Angel Sky Cosplay, Sean the Tech Ninja, and the Big Dirty Nerd as they travel through time and space, review all the nerd news this week, talk about things nobody ever talks about, and answers questions no one asks. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Sunday Night Geek. It's just Sean and I here this hey. evening. No Toby, no Angel Sky. Yeah. Angel Sky had to work. And Toby's at home. And Toby's at home because he doesn't come when Angel no. Sky's not here. So, no. unfortunately, we're down. I guess two cast members tonight. Mm. Let's just well, let's let's just you know we we have to consider Toby a cast member. Here. Oh yeah, he's mascot. He's the mascot. Mm. He is uh, Crypto, the Wonder Pup. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to call him. Yeah, we uh, that that show uh, the, the 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 breaker caught up on me. I was watching yeah. it on the thing, and I was like, "Oh, we've still got like a minute and a half left." And boom, all of a sudden, there we go. Time to go live. Oh, it's like hitting the snooze bar. I got yeah, time. Got time. You're five minutes yeah, late. That's exactly what it was like hitting the snooze yeah. button. But anyway, <clears throat> we're here. We're back. We're live. Yeah. Yada yada yada. And we got a bunch of stuff to talk about tonight. We got. Uh, we were just talking about it offline. We both watched Archive eighty one this week. On this Netflix. week's Peacemaker. This week's Peacemaker. <laughs> we got the Moonlight trailer yeah. to talk about. We got the Picard trailer, Picard trailer to talk, trailer. talk about. Announced dates. Uh, the for announced dates for all the Star Trek mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, and the announced date date for Moon Knight. Yep. Which is actually much sooner than I thought it was going mm-hmm. to be. I was really shocked. Yeah. Uh, so I was happy to hear that. Um, oh, I was going to mention really quick. Uh, there's a spinoff little uh, Big Mouth series coming out in March. I saw that, yeah. yeah. It's like the Human Resources or something. Yeah. Like that. It's like The Office. It's going to be like an office comedy for So that should, be, that should be pretty funny, too, yeah. <laughs> I saw that trailer. That's, that's going to be funny. <laughs> They're just like, horny. I'm like, yeah, we know where this is yeah, going. Yeah, we know what's, where this is going. That's Big Mouth for you. Yeah. So anyway, uh, where do we want to start? You uh, said you, you said you had something to talk about before we get too deep. Oh, into oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a wars out on PC. Yeah, right. I don't have a PlayStation Four, but it dropped, and I was able to get my hands on it, installed it, sat down, and played it, and it sucks you right in. It's, yeah. it's great. Like it, it, it doesn't get like the way it makes you learn the controls is really easy, really uh, cool. Like setting the kids there with you, and he's like your support character, and like right. as well as like you're having like you can choose to is like. Do you want just the action? Do you want narrative? Do you want a balance of both or whatever? Do you want it all and turned up on max, right? Yeah. And, and it can run on decently spec PCs, like without having to be like you know godly. One spec of these, for, one of these super machines yeah. for gaming. Yeah. Oh, mine is pretty good. I got a 1063 gig, which is okay. Uh, but apparently, like that's a, a line stack tips did a video. It was after the fact. I built my computer the way it is now. It's like we built the most Steam computer ever and it's like what they did was they built a computer basically to the specs of steam oh and wow. like, because they can register your hardware right they, yeah. they know what video card you got how much memory you got and it's like okay so 1060 with 16 gigs quad core and ssd blah blah i'm like i feel attacked yeah because it's like that's all my I that's all your stuff yeah it's yeah. all my stuff i'm like it, I can throw stuff at it and it runs. Yeah. Oh, this fell over. Let's uh, make sure that's in frame. Yeah, yeah. Our Bay of Islands Radio yeah. uh, thing, placeholder, or whatever you want to call it. But okay, isn't God of War? Isn't it like an old game? That it is. It takes, an old this game? one takes place many years later, actually, where he's left like the original setting and he's gone into a Nordic setting. You're in. It's wintertime. Oh, so this. Okay, so when they yeah, announced the kid's God, his son. But when they announced God of War is coming out on PC, I thought it was like the original God of no, War no, no, from like no. ten it's years the PS, ago. It's the PlayStation Four. The, the Oh, you did actually move that thing. I didn't feel that there. Well, uh, oh. uh, they actually just, it's the latest PlayStation 4 game, but they've ported it to the PC. Oh, okay. Whereas okay. Xbox just does that anyway. I have yeah. Xbox Live uh, Game Pass, they call it, but I have Ultimate, which is PC and um, Xbox. Okay. You get it on both. Okay. Which reminds me, I got to upgrade my hard drive on my Xbox, but as well, you get cloud gaming. But yeah, PlayStation is pretty reluctant to put their stuff on PC. Yeah. They're trying to keep that wall garden in. That's one thing I need to get now is PS4. Yeah. Uh, so now that we're on the topic of gaming, what about this uh, acquisition of from Microsoft yeah, that's, of yeah. Activision? That's the other thing I was going to mention. Yeah, they bought uh, Activision Blizzard. Activision, yeah. Well, they've had some HR issues as of late. Not Microsoft, but Activision Blizzard and uh, a lot of controversy. 
Really? Okay, I didn't yeah, know anything well, about that. Yeah, there was a lot of like uh, stuff being allowed to go on behind closed doors, even with uh, human resource uh, suits filed and then kind of just downplayed in that. Wow. Yeah. Just look it up. It's a little skeevy. But the, their shares went up a fair bit. But, I mean, like you're looking at like World of Warcraft. You're looking at Call of Duty. And like a lot of that stuff, you're looking as far back as the Atari 2600, yep. like Kaboom and games yep. like that. They yep. were the A- first third-party developer. Activision is one of the grand grand peppies of the uh, they were of the gaming industry. Quintessentially, so. they're the first big third-party developer. They yep. spawned off and made their own games from Atari. Right, but that's what I mean. Like they're they're big, but they they paid handsomely for them. They paid oh, I would say. as much as Disney paid for Fox. But that's oh like a big God. thing. Like World yeah. of Warcraft. Yeah. Like now they can probably roll that into Game Pass. Game Pass also has EA Origin rolled into it, so you can have their free library as well. Wow. That you get with their membership. You get their membership along with it if you get ultimate. Like I got. so, would this be considered a good thing for gamers then? Or yeah, yeah, okay. yeah because. EA has been falling down a bit, like as good as Apex Legends is. There's been, you know, it's not as catchy as like even like Fortnite's still holding on and stuff yep. like that. And like it's one of the competitors of Fortnite as well. And they, it's got a big stable of things. They bought Bethesda like two, two years ago. That's like Fallout and Doom and all that stuff as well. So are we looking at uh, a similar thing in the gaming industry that we're looking at in the other media industry? Consolidation. Like, consolidation and a well, you one could massive because conglomerate. They've already personally contacted someone and said, listen, we're not changing anything about, like, we're not making anything exclusive, anything like that. We're, we're just, you know, going to be owners of blah, 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 this, and we're still going to maintain. It's just we have a big wallet and we can certainly encourage things over there, right? And yeah. Sony has done this too. Sony, people like, when people react, like, oh, Microsoft's buying everything up. Sony... Is actually a by the numbers larger software developer, okay. Than Microsoft by even like buying up studios, they bought up a ton of stuff. There's like childhood figures like Signosis and everything that's like now like is like Sony London or something like that. Like they bought okay. it, like they've been buying up companies for decades. I mean, I'm and just, it's a business thing, but yeah, oh, it's definitely a business but thing. But that's what I mean. Like it, I mean, it's making is, a lot more sense now to like start hedging things together. But this is this is the quintessential capitalist kind of yeah. thing that you know to buy 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 yeah. And, but you know, now it's but a multinational it's, company. It's multinational. Too. It's a conglomerate. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I I look at it from the point of view. Of, well, what about the competition? Apparently, uh, where is Tencent competition? was another one of the companies looking at buying them. Who? They Tencent. Apparently, Activision okay. Blizzard was open to sale, and a few other companies were kind of sniffing. Oh, so around. this wasn't a sole source. No. Oh. No. Okay. Same thing with uh, the Disney sale of uh, buying uh, Fox. Okay. That was that was like they were shopping the Murdochs were shopping that around. They wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. But, yeah, the buyout, I'd say, with Microsoft is going to be healthy because Microsoft doesn't do anything that will just, like, oh, this crashes and kills them as a company. They're just too big now. Yeah. They're self-sustaining. They're their own little black holes, so to speak. Mm, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. But, yeah, they're self-sustaining, yeah. But they're seeing where the market's going. Like, Game Pass is taking off incredibly but well. Everybody's hearing about it. Like, this is on Game Pass Day 1. Like, Halo Infinite's, like, taking off like crazy. It's the new Halo game. Yeah. It was on Game Pass Day 1. I haven't even bothered to play it yet, but it's just, like, I've been there. hearing so much about it, and I'm actually tempted to uh, give it a shot. Their stuff doesn't take a lot of heavy-duty hardware to run. Like, right. you got, like, at least a decent CPU. Most times Intel now or Ryzen, if you're AMD. Runs pretty damn nice. Okay. So a lot of people now are going with these, what they call the APU, where the CPU has the graphics hardware on it, which is like most systems now. But yep. like the video card is ultimately better, but you can get by. A lot of these are actually fairly powerful now. Okay. So a lot of these games can actually be played on these pretty good. You can play kind of warm on them. But yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like uh, like I said, you, there's even cloud gaming now. Yeah. Like if you got Ultimate like I got, you got know, access to cloud gaming. I can like set this. I didn't bring my controller, but I could be playing like Doom Eternal or something on this through the web, through the cloud. What's, wouldn't there be a lot of lag with that though? Or? I find Doom Eternal there is. Okay. That's the only thing, but they're still working on it. It's still in beta. Oh, okay. It's still in beta. It's uh, X Cloud Gaming called. It's still technically in beta. They even have this cute proper license contro- controller it looks like that uh super nintendo controller that has the thumbsticks in that yep but it has the xbox button in the middle oh okay and it's all black and it is licensed and has like all the control but it's meant for taking on the go like because they're trying to get this ultimately so you can stream it from your phone over the cell phone network or right. whatever. but they're working on the lag now and it's getting pretty good because they're getting information from other things that they're discovering right okay but um yeah, where you'll be able to just pull out your phone or whatever, and you you can play some of the phone games on there, but you want to play something heavy spec, just 
you might have a little folding controller from some company or something like that. And That's kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's the gaming industry has come so far in the last 30 years. Like it's crazy. Infrastructure and everything is just, yeah, it's just, now. it's just absolutely insane. I wonder, you know, it kind of makes you wonder what some of these technological advances we've had are due to the gaming industry. <laughs> Well, I mentioned rally and everything like that. Oh, was that's all. Gaming, but yeah. I mean, like, that's being used for, like, stuff like a lot, like, navigation of, like, ocean floor mapping and yep. stuff, right? And just for examining data. Yep. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's it's really interesting stuff that's coming out of the pipes. VR, VR is actually starting to be a viable thing now. Remember back yeah. in the 90s VR? Community had that one episode well, make fun of it there a little while back, too. The 90s VR was mostly, yeah. uh, what was Lamar, it, Ga- Game Boy Red or whatever it was called? Oh, uh, uh, Game uh, Boy uh, Virtual Advance. Boy. Virtual Boy. Virtual Boy. Virtual Boy, that's what yeah. it was. That, we, that gave people extreme migraine yeah. headaches. Yeah. Even people that didn't get headaches yeah. would get headaches from playing these yeah. machines. Oh, my God, it was awful. I played one back in the day. It wasn't I did too. too bad. I, I, I played it once, and I was like, uh, it's, it's squares mm. and hexagonal shapes and polygons. You can emulate it pretty easy, though, now. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, well, it's pretty basic software. You can emulate those little LCD games now. Really? Even the Raspberry Pis have them. The Game & Watch collection. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And, like, even, like, the little, like, the little tabletop little arcade machines, like the little stick in that. Yeah. With the LED backlights. Yeah. Those can be emulated now. Okay. Very cool. You can go right on archive.org. That's got a ton of stuff if you're, like, in, like, playing old stuff. You yeah. Go, oh, I need games. Archive.org. 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 Because I've been... One uh, like I've been not working because of COVID. Yeah, because level two has to happen before I can go to work. So I've been like getting everything sorted in my games room and hobby room, and I got the repair bin being gone through now, and I got to you know fix like our vacuum robot now the night before I go to bed and other things like there's a PlayStation two, but I got an older laptop hooked to a tube TV, and now I got to like emulate and like a ton of stuff, and all I've been doing is like, oh, I want to try this system. It says, oh, try, oh, there's this emulator, ooh. Open up a tab in archive.org and download the whole collection. Throw it right in. You don't even have to unzip them. Retro Archive unzips them and everything. Okay. I have like the CRT TV. It's got a video cable hooked right into it. And I'm just sitting down playing games. And it's great. Yeah. Nice. I feel like an old man, but like well, enjoying you know, it. Enjoying it. Though. I got bad news for you, man. You're over 40. So oh, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely yeah, middle-aged. We're, we're, I'm middle-aged. We're, old men. We're, we're old men now. But it's the good it. part of middle-aged, though. Where you actually have stuff you can enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can just plop down. Now, if we room. just had the money to be able to enjoy more things. Mm. Oh. <laughs> got the 3D printer now. Actually, I got to clean it up now and finish off the big part of the print. I'm doing it for Angela now, and uh, it's a little coin block looking thing, but it holds your Switch games. The lid comes off. Okay. I'm just going to print the parts, finish them, like, fan, uh, fall them off and everything like that, just make sure they're all nice and whatever. And she can paint them and then glue them together and that, and yeah. there she goes. Nice. And then I'm going to maybe either do a couple D&D figures because there's a cool thing you can do. You can take, like, the little different prints of whatever you can find on, like, Thingiverse free prints, and you can slice off parts of them and graph them on others. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, yeah. you need to stop talking about all these different uh, places where you can find this stuff. Why? Passive listening. <laughs> all I've been seeing for the last week is ads for 3D print that, stuff. That, I tell you. <laughs> and like all, right, well, like all the sites you talk about yeah, and all the different apps. Yeah. I've been seeing it's so been many trying ads. to sell me 8K printers. Like, man, I got a 2K printer. I'm good right now. I'm good. I'm absolutely good. Like, I got Enterprise, like a matchbox size Enterprise. Oh, and I cool. painted him up. Like, he's cute. I screw up the nose on a, a TMP era Saladin. I'm yep. just fixing up the nacelle on the nose on it. Yeah. And then that's going to get painted up. And that's going to get uh, TMP colors. And because we have decal paper and an um, uh, actual printer. I can print decals. I did it for the little enterprise I did. So uh, somebody scanned the polar light sheet of decals. Yep. I shrank it from like this to like this. Oh, nice. So, and then I like... So is that out. what all the aztec and stuff done onto it? Or no, I just had, it just wouldn't come out right. I tried printing uh, the aztec and just a test print of it, and okay. it just you would need something like scaling differently. Speaking of which, okay, so we're, we're getting into the Star Trek topic yeah. a little bit here now. Did you watch Center Seat? I started watching uh, the uh, first episode where they're talking about like setting the whole scene of like Desilu Studios and yeah, things like that. Yeah. And I started doing it yesterday, and then Angela got home early. From oh, work. I was so going to start watching like, a couple of episodes and every day and pick at it. Yeah, and like the first, like I was getting the first episode, and because she didn't take a lunch break, she came home. She early. came home early, so you didn't get a chance yeah. to finish it. Because I was just running out into the kitchen, just getting a couple of things ready to make lunch, yeah. and then she was already home. I was like, "Oh, you're home early. Oh, well, I'll start lunch now." Yeah, and then I just yeah. paused, and I think it's open in a tab on the computer hooked to the tv oh okay so it's still there it's still there it's so All far right. so good though like they're yeah. talking about you know it was a really setting scene like about like, you know lucille ball's career and you know and then desi arnaz with her and then you yeah. know because he's very popular actually at the time and 
than he you know, he was actually more popular and her. more involved with saving the series than what I thought. Yeah. I was surprised. I was like, really? Desi Arnaz had a lot to they do with really this. They really believe in syndication, though. They re- yeah, they really did believe in the syndication. They really saw like TV was just spreading at an exponential yeah. rate the way it was, and you would need to take some of the content that was there already. People are going to want to see it again. Yeah. Yeah. So it was elementary, what they were showing. And, yeah, I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I also, oh, do I have left at work, to, or did I take it home with me? The the There was a Trek book. About like the first days of it is kind of like the series, but it's like is talking about that kind of stuff, but a bit more around the development of the show. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually start picking at it because it looks really good. And I got oh, brave, it's, so. it's very good, and you you get an inside look at uh, the way Gene Roddenberry ran mm-hmm. the house, ran the shop, and yeah. oh boy, yeah. He, I'm gonna spoil. I, I'm, you, I'm gonna spoil something a little did, bit for did, you now. Well, really quick before yeah. you spoil it for me, because I think it may be in relation that you ever see the. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me. Oof, I had lunch a little bit earlier. The the doco with Rod Roddenberry? No. So there's a documentary with Rod Roddenberry. Okay. Son. Yep. And about he didn't really feel much connection growing up to it. He just took it as his dad's job doing whatever and that show that he had no interest in watching. And then he started connecting with it much after his father's death, and he was learning stuff like his father's a philanderer and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, is yeah. that what you're talking about? No, yeah, Gene. Gene was a yeah. Gene bragged about on his wedding night. He, he nailed someone. Yeah, he was a bit of a dick. Mm-hmm. And even the way he ran the show was a bit dickish. Was, yeah. And like I, I know he can, like I know he contributed so much to science fiction and so much to to the series and whatnot. But wow. Well, I know about the Maurice Hurley thing. And that's where, that's the one that got Cheryl McFadden. She goes by Gates and the yeah. Actors Guild world, but Cheryl McFadden got kicked off the show. Yeah. He didn't like her. He didn't like her. He didn't like her character. No. Nope. And she was very critical of it because as, you know, famously, I think she said like 24th century women written by 21st century men. Yep. 20th century that, men. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. And so he was showrunner though. Yeah. And Gene's buddy. So he, he got, but he got ultimately kicked off because season two almost tanked because well, they, they, they brought story. in uh, uh, Deanna Mulder. As, yeah, she was as, a favor to him, yeah. apparently, to Jean. Yeah. She had no intentions of staying on, especially no. when she had to put on makeup. She's like, yeah, I'm not going to be doing any if there's any more, because there's always a chance you're going you to gotta put on makeup in the role. Yeah. So. No. Very, very interesting inside look. I mean, the, fir- the first couple of episodes are really, like, I, a little bit shocking. I like. That's what I mean. That's stuff I like, like learning about stuff like that. Yeah. And but then they get into the stuff you know around DS Nine and Voyager mm. and Enterprise and, and the ships, the Enterprise ships and the different, yeah. you know, and you know it it kind of mellows out a little bit. Like there's still a little mm. bit of conflict, a little bit of strife going on on set and like with Enterprise. Like when you get to the the last episode, they're talking about Enterprise and man, like jo- Jolene Blaylock mm. was not liked. No. Not one person interviewed said anything nice about her. You don't hear about her much being interviewed or no. anything in the tri- like. You hear about like you know someone like Colin Trenier or Scott Bakula yeah. or anybody like that. There's just something going on like the captains or something. They'll yeah. go back to them, or like you know Trenier does the 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 convention circuit. I'd never seen any convention show like her. Nope. Uh, anything to do? With, I think to her it was. I think she figure, figured it was going to be a stepping stone. Because I remember yeah. a year before she got the role, I had a Maxim magazine. I was 20 years old at the time. And, yeah, of course, yeah. And at the turn of the Maxim, century. At the turn of the century, yeah, children. Yeah, yeah, Maxim the magazine. Maxim magazine was big back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I had a whole collection. Oh, man. I had a stack propping up a whole bed. Yeah. But, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, Maxim magazine. But there was a whole pictorial for it. Yeah. And it was also pre-work. Oh, yeah. 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 So they were they were pretty new, too. But then she got the, the role in that. And then they did her again that year. But yeah, it was actually a pre enterprise interview with her, so I think they were. She was already being. Usually, when you see people appear like this, they're getting geared up somewhat for it. Because I remember one Mrs. Two, same thing. And two years later, she's like Scarlet and GI Joe, the film. Oh yeah, you know. So yeah. that's what I mean. Like it. Uh, I think that was her trajectory anyway. But I thought I think she dropped off right after that show. I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I haven't I, heard I, her tell of Jolene Laylock in a long, long and time. I, I think she probably was. They knew the show was starting to go under a bit. They had intended on another season because that's how they were playing up that whole yep. trip dying or whatever. It was actually like a whole temporal agency thing. Yeah, around. they uh, they cut off season four like boom. Yeah, it but, was like they were they were told and they were like, well, we got to film two more episodes to round up the mm, season. And well, see, UPN itself was starting to fade. Fade. Mm. Yeah, this is just before the whole merger that formed CW. Yeah, but that's what I mean. They had a they had to go. Yeah, they were casualty of it. 
And, and the, the, the executives, the stuffed shirts at the time, were not fans mm. of Star Trek. They no. didn't understand Star Trek. They didn't get it. This is at the end of the whole return. Yeah. To like TNG, DS9, Voyager, yeah. and then Enterprise was the last bit of it, and the films were even petering out then and getting into getting rebooted, air quotes, so to speak, with the the new Trek universe yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So that was the times. It was it was the times. They were uh, a consequence of the time, yeah. unfortunately. So twenty years now. Twenty years, yeah. Enterprise. It's been a long so yeah, like Enterprise was in what, two thousand and one? Two thousand one. So, yeah, Fall it's a, 2001. a long friggin' time it's been off the air. Anyway, speaking of Star Trek, we have some new Star Trek yeah, coming up trailers. in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so Picard is when? Picard is, well, we got March. Discovery yeah, uh, coming back Discovery, on yeah. February 10th or February yeah, 12th. They just so. had their little hiatus kind of thing. Their those. little mid-season, yeah. yeah. Uh, Picard is March 3rd? Yeah, beginning of March, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Strange New Worlds is like May? Mm-hmm. Lower Decks of is sometime 2022, yeah. quote unquote, yeah. sometime 2022. Yeah. Which will probably be, you know, could be anywhere. So, yeah. I mean, season three of Lower Decks, looking forward to that. I wouldn't mind if they popped off two seasons in the one year. Uh, that'd be very cool. That'd be, that'd that'd be amazing. very cool. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, we got those those big announcements for. And Picard had May. a trailer drop. And Picard had a trailer a drop. New cast member. New cast member? Guinan. Oh, with Guinan. Oh, yeah, God. This yeah, is our first time seeing Guinan because we've seen trailers of it before, teasers yeah. and that. Yeah. And we've seen, you know, John Delancey and that. But now, yeah. now we've we'll we'll shown up as Guinan. Yeah. And it does look like a bit more of a modern day bar. Yeah. So is she in the past, I wonder? Remember or? yesterday's Enterprise. Uh, yesterday's Enterprise, yep. Remember that El Orians have the ability to perceive the time. Time differently. Time differently. Yep. I think that probably includes their memory can go back sometimes or something, especially if the timeline's been altered. That and it's been, because by the looks of the trailer, the timeline's been grossly altered. Grossly altered. And that's one of her species' abilities. And we don't know when she left Earth initially, no. when because we, in Time's Arrow, we bump into her back in the day of Mark Twain Mark in Twain. San, yep. San Francisco and yep. the Klondike Rush. Yeah. So that was like the 19th century. So she's farting around then, but she might not have left Earth like 22. Yeah, she. That was probably why she was on that ship in the beginning of generations. Generations, yeah. That the Alorian crews, the Alorian refugees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely this is going to be one messed up season. I think it's going to be yeah. all over the place. I like the fact they use the slingshot around the sun. Yeah, as soon as I saw like, time, this is how we're doing this time this, travel. This is how this, we're doing I'm the time travel. This. Yeah, this okay. is this is cool. So, well, he has a kind of an almost bird of prey ish little yeah, it kind is, of feel yeah. to his ship. Yeah. And it's not a Starfleet ship, although you see it pops to like the change timeline. He's got a Starfleet, he's got a Starfleet badge. Emblem on, yeah. Again, like because he left, right? Because yep. of PTSD. Yeah. And Picard, at uh, one point, we see Picard with rank stripes yeah. on his shoulder, like, like yeah. traditional Navy kind of thing. Yeah. And his Look at painting, that, Yeah. Yeah. And, and his painting of the Enterprise D has changed from that beautiful yeah. hero shot to a battle scene. Yeah. So the Borg is involved somehow. Yeah. We mm-hmm. see a 21st century version of Noonien soon in there. Mm-hmm. Brent Spiner is there, so makes me wonder. And we see Q give soon something. Yeah. Whoever this soon descendant is. He's playing with the timeline. He's playing with the mm-hmm. timeline. But he's always done it what looks like he's doing it screw with things and he, things ensue. But like they argue with the Borg in season two, he did it to prepare Starfleet. Yeah. Because he can't be outwardly benevolent no in his trappings whatever because he's a high being yeah. and can't be bothered but he's got confidence in that species so yeah. this is game's not over yet game's not over yet so I'm I'm interested to find out if Q is going to be the savior or the villain I don't think he's going to be the villain, but I think there's going to be some hard choices and some things going on and that that he's going to, because Q never makes it easy see no no he, it's all a game. It's all a chess yeah. game to Q. So mm. definitely going to be interesting to see how I it all turns out. Uh, who's the board queen? That is definitely not Alice Creed. No, they said who she is. They yeah. cast her. There was an announcement about her like ages ago. But oh, uh, yeah, this younger younger actress. Okay. Um, they announced her like November, I think they announced her or something like that. But she was announced, I remember. Okay. Yeah. So we've got Q, we've got the board, we've mm-hmm. got Gaiman, we've mm-hmm. got a, a different version of a, a descendant of Noonien soon. Mm-hmm. Lots of stuff going on here. We got Picard. Yeah. Picard knows he's out of time. Yeah. Everything's all messed up. 
Yeah. I think. Do you think Sounds maybe? Like do you think maybe the Borg are rehashing their first contact plan? Go well, back to a point in Earth's past. Maybe what happens is that something happens because of what they were picking with on that Borg cube in the previous season, yeah. and somebody screwed around and was able to get time changed. They screwed around and found out. In other words, yeah, yeah. because that tech may be semi-standard on. Um, a chrono, a chrono drive or whatever the hell yep. you would call it. Yep. Maybe semi-standard tech on a Borg ship. And usually probably has within the small sphere that would be ejected. Yeah, that could be. Because remember yeah. in First Contact, that's what happened, right? Yep. There was a sphere of small cr- cr- with a field or whatever. Yeah, chronotons or whatever yeah. they're called. Yeah. yeah, so it was kept there as like a last, it was always the last ditch effort kind of uh, escape pod. Yep. So I'm wondering if somebody else got a hold of it and went back and changed Starfleet's past to a bit more fascist and et cetera, Could et cetera, be. like we're seeing. And, yeah, we're seeing more like back in the beginning of TNG with the, you know, the, the drugged up guards with the arm strap machine guns yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, we're actually getting that. Yeah. It's going to be very, very interesting to see where the season goes. So I'm really like looking that. forward to it. I can't wait. It's only March, March 3rd. Mm-hmm. We're only talking about, what, four or five, week, five weeks away? Yeah. So, cannot wait for that. Unfortunately, no news on Strange New World, just a release date of yeah. May. So, we're they've been have to a wait. bit hush hush about their. They've been a bit hush hush. I think they're waiting to drop that real nice sizzle trailer. I hope so. Oh, I mean, like, I, cannot wait. I think we're going to start seeing sizzle trailers for that during Picard. See, I think that's yeah. why they've been hush hush. Yeah. Because I think Discovery, a lot of stuff's going to lead into teasing us more and more about Picard. And then yep. we got Picard, and Picard's going to start schmoozing us over about Strange New Worlds, and then yep. Picard's going to be done in probably like May, and then they're really trying to plan these out as solid blocks now, yep. which is great. Yep. And, I, and I like I like that the series are less episodic now, and they're yeah. more serialized. Like, you've yeah. got to kind of watch the entire season to see what's going on, yeah. and, you know, this series connects to this series. Yeah. So, you know, it... it in that respect, it feels like Star Trek again, yeah, right? Because like stuff that happened in the original series was referenced in TNG. Mm-hmm. Stuff that was going on in, T- in TNG mm-hmm. was uh, referenced in DS Nine, like with the Dominion War and stuff like yeah. that. And same thing with well, Voyager the, because of the the remerger that they did at Viacom. They yeah. don't have to worry about any of that stuff. They can even reference like the the tangential timeline of the the Chris Pine and the Calvinverse. Yeah, the yeah. Calvinverse stuff. They they they're referring to that too because yeah. they've made offhanded remarks about that universe that, you know, there's been encounters or something with that. Yeah. So they yeah. have their own multiverse. They have their they technically have their own multiverse. Yeah. Well they'd showed it on TNG. All those enterprises hopping around that one up. Oh, yeah, yeah, Worf right. Worf yeah. was on the way back from the Bat Left tournament or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, right. They, they offer established they have multiverse. Yeah. So I mean they could easily tap into that, go back mm-hmm. to that well. You know, draw drop the bucket down and pull out of that well yeah. a little bit. So we'll have to see what they're gonna do. See like phase two. God, can you imagine? <laughs> For last, they got to do like, oh, man, that's why they, because they said like, this is their new Marvel property and they're, they want to do more comedy. They need to do where they allow like a creator and some people like get Eric Andre and a bunch of people or whoever, like whoever's hot, do like sweet version. Like, you ever see that movie? Thank you. Be kind. Rewind or whatever. The one with Jack Black and that they. I think I have. Yeah. The one where the video store, all the videos get erased. So they like make their own versions and they show them in the, in the. It the, sounds familiar, but yeah. I don't. I don't really but remember. That, but that, yeah, that, okay. They call those sweeted movies, where like you do your own really low budget version of a movie, but you get like creators to do that. Because there's this uh, series coming out on Netflix. I thought it was a joke, but it's true. It's like they do ad lib reenactments of things or whatever with uh, like uh, actor and like some other actors coming, like Ken Jeong or whatever. Okay, and then they're supposed to like uh, crime crime stories or whatever, but they got to ad lib everything. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's, yeah, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's, who's the main actor in that? Because there is one. Yeah, I, I know you're talking oh, about God, that. God, who is it? I can't remember who. Yeah, but I saw the I saw the the drop for that the other day. It came they, in my email. They need to start doing stuff like that. Star yeah. Trek is that big. Yeah. Where you can just do stuff like that, like. I don't know. You're just doing like a Kirk. You got to go dress up as a crabby Gorn being chased like Kirk through a friggin' mall plaza or something. It's like they just start beating the crap at each other. And yeah, I don't know if that would work, man. I, I like, think the fans would shit their pants if that happened. I, I think that'd be great. Like you have to do some, not all the time, but just like you got to do like little gags like that where like, you know, Jackass is coming back. Oh, f- Jackass. <laughs> That's awful. I, you know what? I, I watch both of their movies. I, I hate them. three. 
There's three? Yes. Okay, good. See, that's how much I pay attention to Jackass. Like Johnny Knoxville and all those other guys. That's Paramount, too. They're, they're just, they just piss me off. Oh. Like Johnny Knoxville at one point was so hot that everybody made a big deal him, yeah. about him being yeah. in uh, Men in Black 2, I think it was. Yeah, and he was in the Dukes of Hazard, and, and he was in the Dukes of Hazard. Like he was so on fire there, like early two thousands. And I'm like, why? He's got his body beat to hell, like all the other yeah, ones. He's just not he's a rodeo clown. He, that's what he's a clown all he's right. a, <laughs> Um and Not in but, a good way. So you saw with Mrs. Archive Archive eighty one. What an amazing series! Like, I, I didn't know what the... It like, started really, like, in one way, and then it just went... It totally, like, it was like this, and then poof. It, 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 it was, was so good. I thought it was going to be a lot more, like, ghosty, ghosty, fantastical, yeah, and yeah. it became a lot more science fiction-y, quantum leap, yeah. and I'm just like, wow. What no, this just is, happened there? Yeah. That's... Okay, this... There were, like, in the first episode, there were scenes where I was watching it like this, like, with my hands over my face, because I hate jump scares. I yeah. hate jump scares. I hate them. I, I like them when they're well used. Not just abused not, in some movies. It's just like yeah. there's a spam button. Jump scare, jump scare, yeah. jump scare. Like, no, stop it. But so, James what, you know, part of episode one, <laughs> I, I watched like this, right? With my hands over my eyes. And it, it was just so well done. Like, everything yeah. about it, like, everything about it was like creepy. Like, little corners of his eye that he's seeing stuff. That, like, when he has a call, like, am I alone down here? Yeah. And all he says, like, are you having a mental episode or whatever? And, like, they just, you they, know. They played on that so much. Yeah. Like, are you they having a mental episode? They into it on him and, like, yeah. making him feel like, are you, you're going crazy, right? Yeah. You're kind of, like, gaslighting him almost over the phone. Yeah. And then it kind of, well, that's exactly what it was like. Yeah. It was the whole gaslighting thing. And, and and you know, I had the feeling that, uh, uh, what's his name? The uh, uh, Virgil uh, Davenport, was that his yeah. name? Yeah. I, I had a feeling right from the get go, he knew more what was going oh, he on. Oh, way more like it when he tipped way his hand more. and when he said, like, that universe can't do that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was like, how do you know the laws how, of how that you know, universe? How do you know the laws of that universe? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was totally different than anything I've ever seen. For people who don't know, what we're talking about yeah. is the show Archive 81. It's on Netflix. Can't drop this week in a star. I'm, uh, uh, Matumbe, I forget his name. I hate insulting people's names, pronunciation, but he plays a young man yeah. who's a, uh archival restoration uh, engineer who specializes in re- restoring videotape, audio tape, magnetic media in general. And, and for, and the, for those of you who are probably... VHS. Too, yeah, for those of you who are probably too young to even realize what that is, Google it, VHS. VHS. <laughs> well, the whole big thing is he's there, and he's just on a street corner in New York. There's a guy selling VHS tapes, and he's got a price, but but he doesn't own anything. I was like, man, why are you selling these? You don't, you don't own a VCR? Check them out. He's like, well, store credit. Bring it back, blah, blah. But I was yeah. like, guy doesn't own a VCR, and he's selling VHS because yeah. they're just, people are finding boxes of them now because grandma had all of her soaps recorded, and that actually does that play actually in plays and part into of it. it. It actually is a thing in this. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, and so he's contacted by this damn poor guy. Because it restores stuff. It cuts to something that actually plays into it later is he's looking at this unreleased 1958 anthology series called The Circle. The Circle. And, and it was this box of tapes that was literally dug up on the estate of this old producer. Yeah. And no, no, was, don't get in too spoilery. Not, not with, too spoilery, but, but like yeah, you see him, yeah, but yeah. you see him like taking and swapping apart, off yeah. reels and stuff, right? That's his thing. He. And then he's marveling over his work because, you know, he's got to make sure that it's all good. There's no yep. kinks. There's no blah, 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 and all that stuff with the tapes. Yeah. And so he gets contracted to, like, you got to come here because the tapes are so fragile. We need to restore these tapes. And then Spooky ensues. Yeah. That's a, that's a good that's a good breakdown. Spooky ensues. Spooky ensues. Oh, yeah. man, it's crazy. Because it cuts back to flashbacks of the era of where these tapes originate from. Love the way that... Which was only 1994. Yeah, so only. Only for us. Only only, only for us. For I mean, us. It was 25 only. years ago or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But I love the way they did that because you see everything uh, through the lens of the person making the recording. Yeah. But then... It flicks back to 1994, yeah. and you see everything that's going on around yeah. her while she's recording, mm. and it all starts to make sense more and more as you watch uh, every episode. More and more gets revealed and released, and you're like, "Oh!" So I watched like you might see a recording in episode two, yeah, but by episode four, you're like, "Oh, that's what was going yeah. on in that recording." That's yeah, it made perfect sense. And yeah. then he's discovering other recordings along the way, all that are along related, the way, yeah. And then they zap back to like even older times, even stuff. older stuff. Yeah, it was just wow. Oh, she at one point has one of these little uh, uh, recorders that has takes like audio cassettes. Audio cassettes. I bought one of those when I was a kid. I didn't know price. they existed. Oh my god, yes, that was so cool. They're, they're coveted by hipsters right now. Um, 
whose uh, Technology Connections does a video, I believe, on it, too. A couple of people have. Audio Archive does. And Fisher Price were the ones that distributed them. And you can get them in the Sears catalog back in the day because I want one so bad when I was a kid, like 87, 88. They came with a little black and white TV. Yeah. They had that. What it was was a cassette like that's broken up into two tracks on each side. Okay. Left and right audio. But, like, one of the tracks is used for video instead, and it's just a low-resolution like yeah, eight it millimeters was, it was level, really a low resolution. It is. I was like, Ooh, when, they, they, when they showed that, that, I was like, yeah. that's actually pretty accurate. It's like, it's, it's. He's like, oh, we got better stuff. Like, wow, that's not much better than eight millimeter. But it is yeah. like, because they said the eight millimeter thing was fairly tortured comparatively to that tape, which was fairly pristine. Yeah, but like those things, yeah. The, there's uh, like little indie filmmakers use them all the time. That now, they, they they give like a little nice old school low res black and white look to everything and it really like the the scenes they shot with that camera because obviously they were shot with they that camera they because they're very easy to modify for video out it was like, re- like it's gorgeous Sony PXR something or other I'm trying to, a, a, a Fisher Price PXR something or other I'm trying to remember okay uh, but yeah they're they're totally a thing okay they were totally a thing they were like for like if your kid wanted to get into video production but you didn't want to fork out half a grand of an actual like video camera back then to yeah. stuff money you pay maybe a hundred bucks a junior. You had a little TV and everything. You yeah. can watch stuff on. Uh, classmate of mine had one. Pen. Oh yeah? yeah, yeah. Grade four. She had one. Well, it was Very her cool. brother's, but she brought it in one day. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I wanted one so bad. Well, now they might come back into popularity after this series. There, there's tech. definitely going to be a season two of this series. Oh, there definitely is. The way the way if anybody's watching this, watch to the end. You definitely when you see the very end, it's like, oh, there's oh, season two. There's going to be season, season two. two. Because, like I said, it gets a bit a lot more Doctor Who. It seems a lot more like this is like a tangential Doctor Who pocket universe. Yeah, kind of like it had. It kind of had that vibe, right? Like, like you said, it went from this creepy, spooky thing to this very. I want to say hardcore fiction-y. science fiction. It gets really much more into that. Although it has a little bit of like Lovecraft to it. It's a lot more. Did it ever have yeah. that Lovecraft feel to it? And I felt well. like was it what was that movie with James Wisdom back in the day with Cronenberg as like the the TVs would go all weird but i felt like that kind of thing but yeah like when he's like in like the place and all the tv start going crazy on him and start yeah that was, that was creepy right you first you see it a little bit in the fuzz yeah and then later on as you see it in episodes start sharpening out yeah but yeah it's it's different I it like was it. definitely different i liked it i really enjoyed it but um things aren't what you think they're either no. like people aren't who you think they're either no. until like even almost the very last moment yeah i was like oh that's great yeah it's great. I love it. It's very it. cool. And yeah. as you watch, you just don't want to stop. It just it the pacing, the way it's written, the way everything's presented. Yeah. It just is really well done. Everything was really well done yeah. about it. Like we sat down, we watched it in two nights because we started watching it too late. Um, I think it was Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. And uh, we only got like three episodes in, and mm. then I was like, we have to go back and finish yeah. that tonight. So we watched most all of it except for when we got too tired, and then the next day we last the last two episodes we watched. Yeah. And it was it was rather good. Yep, really good. Highly recommend. Five out of five. Mm-hmm. It is, and, and give, I'll give it a god. They yeah. renew it. It's, it's not so officially too. renewed. That's no. why I mean. Uh, I looked it up like today. Actually, I guess like, have they renounced it yet? No, they haven't announced it. Yet. No. It's only been out for a week, but you know they're going to. Oh, they're going to. They're definitely going to. Uh, and of course, we had another trailer drop this week, which of course was the Moon Knight trailer. Yes, Moon Knight, which starts also starts in March. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? Another Disney Plus series. Yeah, that's been Disney in the Plus works series. For all. I forgot all about them, actually, yep. having that in the works. Yep. So uh, Oscar Isaac is in this, which is kind of neat because Oscar Isaac, of course, played Apocalypse yeah. in the uh, X-Men Apocalypse and movie. Poe Dameron in Star and Wars. Poe Dameron in Star Wars, which, uh, whatever, I didn't, yeah. My niece, my yeah, niece, my niece told me she was very uh, disappointed and that, that, that wasn't Han and Leia's son. I was like, why? Uh, I was like... Well, he's so handsome. I was like, well, Adam Driver's not that bad looking. I mean, he doesn't really look like their kid, though. Like, no. he, you do think that, like, he's just like, he didn't get his daddy's height, but he, they're two handsome people, is what she said. Yeah. So he looks like just the overwhelming numbers of handsome. It's funny, he said something about, like, they, it was hard to sit in that uh, cockpit seat because it was around Latino butt. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, because it's just narrow little pot. They put a little narrow pilot stall seat in there. It's just a little jump seat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, my ass do what for that? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I can't wait to see because, like, you see in the trailer, though, like, he's already fighting with his mind, like, yeah. as they totally play up, like, the whole thing by Moonlight. He's just, 
He was a little crazy. He's like that well, little panel. He, he had a split, dead family, Frank. <laughs> yeah, he split. He had a split personality, yeah. right? So, and they've only really seen. We've only really seen his uh, Mark Spector and Stephen Grant personalities in the trailer. Yeah, but in the comic, he had a lot more than that. Oh, he had like four God, or five. Yes. That's right, what I mean, and, okay. and at one point, I believe he actually had the personality of the, the, the yeah the personality of Conchu. Yeah, right, directly in him as well, opposed I mean. to being a god outside. Well, right? it was dictated by the moon itself and yeah. things like that, right? Though, well, hence the name, like they, moon they night, yeah. which I thank God they didn't beat the hell that narrative yet. They you want to show that organically kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, like they don't want to do that. He said the thing. He said the thing. You're some kind of moon knight, are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. They don't do something like that. Thank no. God. But no, like they'll break down probably like the whole thing. Thankfully. But we're really starting to see the real bridging out into yeah. the Marvel Universe, yeah. not just like the core Avengers and New Yorkers. And there's supposed to be like Reed Richards and everything popping up in Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah. The next one. I mean, the, yeah. the, 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 the first madness. Yeah. There's a lot of possibles. There, there was, uh, I was watching a, a reel on Instagram this, just before we came here, actually, uh, from the Nerdist, and mm-hmm. uh, one of their guys is making a connection between Moon Knight yeah. and the Darkhold from uh, Scarlet, from uh, WandaVision. WandaVision, yeah. I had to think with that. For, I was about to say Vision and Scarlet yeah. Witch, but WandaVision, yeah. uh, because she has the Darkhold now. Yeah. And the dark hold in the comics is responsible for the creation of vampires mm-hmm. and blade. Yeah, and uh, it also has uh, the elder god Chututh or something like that. I yeah. can't remember how to pronounce his name. Is responsible for the creation of werewolves in the Marvel universe. Yeah. So I'm wondering if all of this is going to come together. Are we going to see werewolf by night? Probably will. You know, uh, ultimately in the Marvel universe, the page that holds the spell that created all vampires was destroyed, and it did. Destroy all vampires, right? Because Michael Morbius is like one of the only ones that. Well, he's not a real. Vampire. He's not a real vampire. He's scientifically yeah. reproduced, but Blade, I think, was because where he was a born vampire, yeah. spared him. He was because it's involved anybody that's turned, yeah. But he wasn't. He was born into it. He was, so he he was, was born a, a, a hybrid. A, yeah, yeah. So he part technically human, part vampire. Avoid that. So I think they're the only two quote vampirics left in six one six. Yeah. Because that was like in the eighties, dude. They killed off all the vampires well, in the eighties. A long time ago, yeah. Yeah. This is like Tomb of Dracula, I think, with that series or whatever, yeah. maybe. And a lot of people don't realize of course now we're yeah. supposed to be talking about Moon Knight, but we've branched out here a little bit. But like Dracula, like the Tomb of Dracula series. That was big. That was huge. And yeah. Dracula was actually a villain in the Marvel yeah. universe. Like the superhero universe. Yeah. It was like, wasn't just a supernatural. He sired character. a lot of like little generals and stuff for yeah. himself and everything. Like yeah. that's the thing. He had his own series, Tomb of Dracula. Tomb of Dracula, and I mean he he played a big role in the yeah. X Men there yeah. back in the early two thousands, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, turned Jubilee into a into a vampire. She yeah. was a vampire. Mm-hmm. You know, Logan was supposed to be Lord of the Vampires in a yeah. What If series. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah. all of this stuff is, is is stuff that Marvel can definitely draw from the well oh, for, right? Like, and, But, like, the, the the look of this series, the look of this Moon Knight series, I, well, I was blown away with how Moon, like, the costume looks. And they're over in London doing most of it, too. They're in London doing most of it, yep. Yeah. That's yeah. great. But I like the fact that his costume is actually uh, mummy wraps. Yeah. That kind of just form around him mm. and stuff. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I do like that. Yeah. I yeah. like the look of everything. It's it's yeah. it's really like the stylization still there, the Marvel look in general still, but yeah. like he's got, yeah, the mummy wrap and like the medallion. The medallion, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see it though. Yeah. It's not too far off. Like like we're getting, getting fe- F.U. February is the name of the month coming up. F-U. This F.U. February, I can't say the whole thing on air. But that's no. the, that's what Red Letter Media calls it. Oh, yeah, that's where everything is like dumped. Like we'll start oh, getting like okay. all these movies coming out now and stuff that like would never survive the summer. Yeah, but uh, the Kingsman finally found a copy. Right, yeah, it. you were saying, yep, it's very well done. Yeah, uh, so if I that's can what, get to see it in theater, Joseph will... finds it or Ralph finds. Ralph, Ralph the older brother. Okay. okay, the older one. Okay. The older one, and it really sets the tone for. The company that he sets up and everything like oh, that, okay. right? And it cuts to like the very last part is like where they had the establishing shot of the first ones with the code names and that, and they established like the structure of it. But like their first big problem they faced before they were formerly what they were, which is great. It's very much a dark ringleader kind of daily look and like very almost like old timey serialized in some ways where like you have this not too fleshed out threat that they have to face and okay. things like that, and like the establishing too of like when. The main character is younger boy, and the husband all the loss he goes through. 
Okay. Is the villain in this Rasputin? One of them. Yeah. One villain is Rasputin. One of them. Okay. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's a whole like villain network. He's just one of them. Oh. They don't have rings or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So they're like the Green Lantern Corps of villains? No, no, no. no. Like, yeah, like their little membership ring kind of thing. Not like what does things. It's just like. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. It's just. So they all have like their signet rings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. One has like she wears it as a medallion or whatever. Okay. But it's good. It's really good. Like uh, John Manansu is good. He's kind of like the, um, the, um, the family like Alfred. Oh, okay. I guess is the best way to put it because it's like, you know, teaching the son, like fighting, and he's the driver and security, although the maid's also a crack effing shot. Okay. Wow. <laughs> she's she's hardcore, too. Yeah. It's great. Like, the whole, like, the, I don't want to go into it too much and if people can actually still watch it, which is hard right now. But that's why I had to resort yes. to how I had to watch mine. But I was like, oh, it's on? I'm watching it. Yeah. This whole having theaters closed really nah, sucks. It does suck. And more. what makes it worse is that it's not like the global shutdown we had two years ago where movies stopped coming out. Yeah. Now it's just us and movies are still yeah. coming out and we're going to miss them. Or wait until they come to digital. Or wait until they go to digital. Because they all know that once it goes digital, everybody's going to see it anyway and oh, yeah. get their money for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit pissed with Cineplex Store, actually, because I, I wanted to watch Ghostbusters Afterlife. We got a rental for that, too. And uh, Well, that's that's what I have. I have a rental for it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to watch Ghostbusters mm. Afterlife. They only had it for sale. They didn't have it for rent. Mm. And yeah, I was no, like, it's, oh, it's currently that's crap, on guys. all the outlets. I think it's for sale. Same thing as on Prime, I think. You yeah, can buy it on Prime for 30 bucks. Yeah, that's bullshit. See, I want to rent well, it. I don't want to See, that's it. how they're doing it now. See, the early release, you do it like that, and then it'll go over to like a streaming service. Remember how it used to be like back in the day, it would be pay-per-view on something like satellite or yep. cable, and yep. then after a while, it's on the movie network. Right. Well, now it's on like, you're on Prime or something like that, you pay 30 bucks for it. Yeah, but if I've got the Cineplex store, yeah. why don't they have it available to rent from the Cineplex store? Well, that's what I'm wondering, too. I know why they shouldn't have a bit more of a... A variety yeah. of, you know, okay, here's your purchasing options. Yeah. Yeah. Buy it or rent it. Yeah. Fifteen dollar viewing, even just you just rent it, not like buy it for thirty bucks. Yeah. But I guess, I guess that's the whole thing now. The studios, how in this COVID world, want to hedge their bets. Well, yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, they Disney doesn't it. do the Disney Plus stuff now because it's just the headache of a lawsuit they're going through right now. Yeah. I thought that was resolved. I with uh, Johansson with ScarJo, yeah. Uh, I don't oh, know if it is thought, or not, but it was a headache resolved. though. Anyway, legally, oh, it right? was, yeah, territorially, yeah, yeah. and that too, right? Yeah. Like you couldn't even do it everywhere. No. Some places just didn't offer it, or some countries you had to do it through a different service. Same yeah. thing with HBO Max. Down there, the theatrical stuff, they're Warner Brothers now, same day on HBO Max, but here it's not. It's still in theaters, which is kind of weird because you can part the hell out of it because some stuff, like, because theaters were closed just before Christmas. That's how I watched The Matrix Revolutions. Resurrections. Resurrections, whatever. <laughs> they're all the same. They're and it showed same. that they were all the same. It even said, we're all the same. We're going to do this again. Yeah. I didn't mind it, though. And I like the outer, actual real world build of it. But, uh... oh, um, Peacemaker. Yeah. Another great episode. Wow, though. He's learning like he is, you know, he's he's learning he's a nice guy, but he's really had to contend with the conditioning that oh, he's had. Oh, did he ever. And you see how much of the conditioning that he's yeah. had? Dad yeah. was horrible. Dad was an asshole. Although extremely brilliant. He has a little quantum, quantum pocket universe. Po yeah. I was like, see, that's a, see that you ever hear of Tesseract Marvel in, D in DC, and they've been saying it since the 90s? That's their definition of a Tesseract. It's a pocket universe. Yeah. Uh, 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 what, DC 1 million? They were everywhere. The Fortress of Solitude in, in the 853rd century is in a Tesseract. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I think is more the traditional definition of a Tesseract yeah, anyway. It's it like is a, a pocket, pocket universe, yeah. and you can change the laws within of that. Like, it's yeah. supposed to be like if you want eighth dimensional space, and it can exist within. But yeah, that's that's what it is. It's a very small Tesseract. Yeah. But it's like, he's just grabbed all the helmets. They're all different ones. Like, all different what does helmets. this one do? Yeah. But yeah. Um, and we see the White Dragon's armor, which was kind of neat to see. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it looked like it in the comic. Oh, that's, did it? That's so, how it looks in the comic. Okay. That's how it looks. Okay. Uh, in the early 90s, there was another Who's Who series, and actually he has an entry, and that's what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Right. They're, they are very much trying to go for the more, unlike the Arrowverse stuff, the HBO stuff tries to really much more look like the comic. Well, and not just that, they make a reference to, of all characters, 
matter eater lad. Yeah, I was like, which is a, what? That's an ability of his species. Yeah, I, and I was thinking but, to myself, yeah, like, James Gunn's hauling them all out. Oh, too, right? did like, he ever haul that one out of left field, man? Oh, well, he's got judo, man. Although they're they're all more of the Carlton character. But then, like, yeah, same thing with Vigilante. Although he's not like a lawyer or disenchanted yeah. in this kill van or whatever. Now he's just like this bus boy. But yeah, matter eater lad. When they said that, I yeah. was like, oh, my God. And then I thought about, like, God, that man's got to go through so much emodium. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, just, oh, wow. Yeah, and but, yeah, and then Vigilante does a, tries to do a smart thing. And you think, oh, he's got to get the crap kicked out of him. No, he can hold he his own. He hold his own in that prison fight. Even with his toes screwed up like yep. that. I like Captain Zistic. No, that's the one that cripples you. Yeah. No, no, no. no it's no, the no, other no. one. Yeah, it's the other one. Yeah, it's not the oh, little toe. You learn their Basto is a butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not really shocked. There's kind of saw that coming. Thought, though. Watch that. That because these are all Carlton pocket of DC Universe characters, that yep. they're related to the Scarabs, as in yeah, we, I think I think you talked about but that like, a little bit last they're, week. They're, they're, because there's factions, though. Right. So they're thinking this. Some people, like me and Angela, too, says, like, this seems almost like a faction thing because he's enforcing the getting rid of the butterflies, but... He's a butterfly. He, he's a butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. But he kept the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Peacemaker <laughs> kept the one that came out of Buddy's head. He, at least he's he running like, get rid of it. Kill it. Kill it. What is it? <laughs> no, I don't like it. But then, like, he has his little episode. They both like, you okay, guy? Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, he's really, like, going through a lot of stuff. He's but, like, going coming, so much. Like, going, coming through a lot of stuff, though, yeah. too. But I, I liked it when he was uh, using the bong and he... Blew the smoke into the into the butterfly's cage <laughs> or bottle or whatever it was, and the butterfly was like, uh, "Yeah, that's better." <laughs> oh man, good. I mean, this is turning out to be a fantastic, fun well, little series, right? They like, show like you don't have to do all like what they've done before for superhero stuff. It can be whatever you want it to be, yeah. and this is great. This this is stuff like that is more like the eighties and nineties Justice League stuff, like when there was a bit more of comedic band and some stuff, even towards Vertigo and just the weirdness of Vertigo, not yeah. the Although there is nudity in, the, in this series, but just like, oh, it, it's just the weirdness of it. It's just like how out there they just get some of the Completely concepts. Completely out there. And then they pull up stuff like that. Matter you're like, last episode, Batmite. Batmite, right? Like just. So they're basically swinging that this is basically the main DC universe, more or less. That's what I'm thinking, right? Like it seems that this is, this. if there was a prime universe, this is yeah. it. This is this is it. The same thing as like the Cavill and Baff like kind of yeah. incarnation characters yeah. all kick around this universe. Well, I mean the Suicide Squad. So I mean, there you go. Yep, oh, I still love that movie, the new one. Oh, the new one is so good, so good. <laughs> it's like you can't do that. You just can't. When it's rad as whatever. He's like, damn it, he's right. Yeah, I like that part when they have him the kill off. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally Venture Brother stuff, by the way. But no, we 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 saw that it was great. But there was we watched Barge's Gemstones. Just what I was telling you about yep. that before. But uh, Legends took a big swing at reality TV this week. Really, they like they had like they are using John's house right now. They had to jump back to there after some adventure, and it's stuck in hell. And now they have okay. encountered the cursed crew, which is the cursed reality TV crew that sold their souls for some reality TV thing and so then when they went to hell the only thing that gets them out of hell is they gotta catch them in a genuine moment but because they're being followed by the cursed crew and they finally saw them or whatever blah blah but like they all start going in different reality TV kind of bends so like uh, what's her name and her missus they start going like Kardashians and she's all airheady and stuff and like uh, Nate and uh, Zari are like uh, um, what you call Jersey Shore he's even got the blowout haircut and everything like that and he's got the fake tan on and stuff and then like the missus that they picked up that fights like the the monsters or whatever she uh she's buddy from uh, uh um survivor when it was his birthday he wore nothing but a bandana oh yeah yeah so she's going around with the blur on her the whole episode oh my it's funny because ever it's what everything is resolved like hey hey they're like oh sorry i was just so used to it it just felt natural <laughs> she's just walking around so i was like hey guys goes to the fridge and she's still naked but it's like that's what i mean they're like they're taking direct shots at like different series beloved or whatever like you know no sacred cows kind of thing yeah but that's what they're doing like see, every episode now seems like that's what they're doing again they're they're more it's like community where they're just taking swipes at tropes because, like I said, this is just they were just doing all reality show, even like pans and zooms, angles and stuff. And the crew were dressed like you know the reality. I can't, I can't wait for this to come back on Crave. Yeah. Like, I'm still a season behind because Crave hasn't yeah. picked up season seven yet. So. It's funny. Matt Ryan's part of the cast, but he's not John Constantine. He's some scientist they picked up on the way. 
has a beard and everything, brown hair. I think he's still with the show, but I'm wondering if they have a moratorium on actually having John Constantine appearances for some reason. And I wonder if there's something else being planned. There's a rumor that because Keanu Reeves expressed interest in the wall back that they may be trying to maybe develop a sequel to his Constantine. That would be very cool, but like DC has established that there's a multi Yeah, multi well, that's what I mean, there, though, so. just like more, just avoid brain confusion at the oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, could, I like, can see that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah what yeah, they've done with right. Star Trek as well, like in, in, in like avoiding having, uh, in TNG, having the TMP style ships appearing, except for like maybe like a Reliant class, but not having like, oh, that's the other Enterprise or whatever yeah. kind of thing. So, you know, shows have done that in the past, like avoid brain confusion. But it's weird. No, he's playing some other character totally. He's a scientist from like early 20th century or something like that. Have they made any kind of inside joke like you look very familiar with? Oh, they have. Yeah, okay. It, they have. They totally have. And they still are in John Constantine's house. Like it's John Constantine's house, their main base right now. Because So the, it, could it be like his memory's been wiped or something? Or? Well, that's what I'm wondering because it seems so weird that they've like made the joke more than once, but he hasn't acted at all like John Constantine. He's, his personality is totally different. He has a beard and brown hair and everything, glasses, and he's still wearing like the, the, like the Edwardian era kind of like. Uh, suit with like the vest and like the stars collar and that and everything. Okay, pocket watch era kind of guy. Wow, all yeah. right. That's what I mean. Like he, he's not John Constantine. They're in John Constantine's house. He is not John he's Constantine. He's not John Constantine. He's just somebody they picked up on the way. Interesting. I think they're kind of doing that little joke towards like seventies TV where they've recycled actors. For yeah, different yeah, roles. Re- recycle actors for different yeah. roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Which... show, the show is very tropey. Yeah, but we watched that. Batwoman's getting interesting. They're they're still like doing the whole gear up, and Diggle showed up yep. in this episode. And oh, did he? Yep. Okay. Another series I can't watch because it's not on any streaming services. Yeah. Well, that's why we have to resort to what we do. We just just keep watching them while they're fresh. Yeah. But yeah, he's supposed to have Justice Year or something like that. So I think that they're playing it more. His hair looks a little different and everything too. So I think they're getting him more in the look for his own show. Okay. And we watched Superman and Lois. Getting very interesting because they're revealing more of actually the family past, especially his brother. And okay, brother gets taken out of jail to um, he digs out another crystal in his fortress. Oh, and did you watch last season? I watched last season. So you saw Dad got erased. Yeah, it's mom. Oh, mom's in a crystal too. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he he's never taken out the crystal before. Uh, Edge or whatever he goes play. Yep. Uh, but yeah, because <clears throat> of the Clark's been having some issues that have been bringing him to his knees sometimes during battle. As well as the military has been exploiting the leftover younger Kryptonian, Neo Kryptonian things, whatever they use with the ex Kryptonite. I'm not surprised about that. Yeah. One yeah. kid's barely 18, as he remarked, and there's this arsehole general because, well, Sam's retired now, right? Daddy Lane. So. Yeah. And uh, Lana, Lois's credibility is being called into question, and Lana is running for mayor or something like that. And it's it's starting to really flesh out into okay. like a whole thing. It is like kind of like Smallville, but you can tell you know a different universe and all. But like that can't same kind of feeling community they're trying to have there. This this is what pisses me off. Like we got rid of cable, and now we're missing all these shows because they're not on any streaming services that we have. Mm. And I'm like, I really want to. Like, this is really the last gas for stuff woman. like that, though. What is? For, like, you know, cable being how it is where they're trying to hold stuff exclusive yeah. to it just because, like, my God, I just throw on CBC Gems sometimes. Like, if we get on to in front of the TV at the right time and Angela comes home, we watch the news, and then all the way off Coronation Street because you can still stream Is Coronation there. Street still on the air? Yes, it is. Oh, my God. Yes, it is because we're like, oh, no, 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 we're too early. Coronation Street's on because we're watching, like, we watch Son of a Critch in 22 minutes usually that way. Yeah. So that's how we watch it. So, oh, no, coordination straight. No, we'll wait a couple more minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's still on TV, and you can even stream it now. Oh, my God. Grandma, that all she, all the, grandmother needs a Chromecast in her phone, my son. She got the internet. That must be the longest-running show on television. Even the theme is so mournful. It's yeah. just like, it just sounds like Sunday morning. You're yeah. so oh hungover. You, yeah, that's exactly what it reminds me of, just, Sunday morning. That's what I mean. It sounds like a Sunday morning hangover theme. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. But no, we, we watch stuff like that. And like down in the States, you can just stream if you want. You can even like TV shows, like yeah, TV um, stations have streaming options like there's playstation uh, tv which is you just have a playstation and an internet connection and just sign up for that and like you get the same thing as cable your local stations and all that just through your playstation see it just makes like seriously with the way everything is going it just makes yeah. more sense just to do it that way You're doing it now like that yeah that's why just we haven't bothered to do like down in the states when they switched off all the old school things they had a bunch of new over the air channels we didn't bother so much here in canada because you can stream yep 
So, but um, yeah, we we even want catching shows like uh, yeah that we have to resort to things like that and doing that like other ways like websites and stuff like that. Like we have the, like the little console sized computer hooked up to the TV so we can like just like break out the mouse and right. watch what we want. Because there's no other ways otherwise. There is no other way but, otherwise. But uh, was it? Uh, we do get to watch other stuff though. Like, <laughs> the, whose line is it anyways? It's still on TV, and it's still great. Okay. Yeah. All right. On that note, we are only about a minute out, uh, yeah, so we are going no to shut down for up. tonight, and we'll be back. I'm assuming Angel Sky is here with us again yeah, next it's week. Every second weekend. Every we'll second be. weekend. Now. Yeah. Oh wow, that's, that's should be missing a lot. Hmm. I, I don't think it's always, but that's the pattern. Okay. Well, we'll have to make two. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we'll be back next week. Same <laughs> geek time, same geek channel. Say goodnight, geek. Goodnight.